Yo, this is your boy David Lucas, and we fishing with David Lucas. And today, I got Chicago's own Rocky Fresh. Yes, sir. Hey, he ain't a um, country boy like me. So the first one, you know what I'm saying? You, you talented. You'll watch me, and then I'll uh, you got the next one on you. I right, bet. Let's do it. <laughs> I'll throw the first one out there. Get it out there. See what we can get out here. We're fishing at an undisclosed location. Real pro with it though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> man, it's so crazy, man, because uh in LA um when i when I, like right around when i first moved to la i think yeah like 10 years ago when that video dropped uh my buddy was from chicago he was a comedian and he would play you all the time and i'm like who was this dude he's like man that's rocky fresh you don't know rocky fresh and you know social media wasn't popping like it is now there was no TikTok. fact so like and it was TikTok 10 years ago you know your video would have been on all the well your your, your snippets yeah uh, yeah and then i just started uh listening to all your stuff man God is great, driving 88. Then you, Ross, and Nipsey all had a song together, right? Yeah, set yeah. up lifelong. Shout out to, to Ross, RP, the legend, Nipsey Hustle. That was, a, that was a crazy time, like just working on all that different stuff. How did you uh, end up signing to Maybach Music? So, Being a Chicago artist, way up here. So uh, basically, like, I was putting out a lot of music leading up to me doing my deal with Maybach. Uh -huh. And I was getting a lot of coverage by a lot of the blogs. Shout out to Double uh, XL, Fake Sure Drive, um, Rap Radar, right. Elliot Wilson. So me and Elliot Wilson, we started to build a relationship like right when Driving 88 at first came out. Yeah. And uh, he had posted the video for this song I did, Into the Future, which was me having a DeLorean and the, and the uh, Back to the Future shoes and all of that in the video. And when he had posted that video, I thought it was gonna get like a million views the first week. Right. But in reality, it only got like around like 7,500 to 10K, right? But of those 7,500 to 10K, Ross saw the video. Oh, wow. Diddy saw the video. Diddy? Yeah. A bunch, of, a bunch of labels saw the video. And so probably a couple of days after that, I ended up just starting to get hit up by all the different labels. That's crazy. And then like a little bit of war started. And uh, basically, yeah, I chose Rose because I was a huge fan of Ross at the right, time. Still right. am. He's one of my favorite rappers. But also, I like what he was doing with MMG. Right. I crossed paths with Wale and Meek Mill before right. they signed with MMG. And I just really like, you know what I'm saying, like the, the freedom that he gave them to be themselves. Right. And so at the end of the day, after some months of like deliberating, I made my decision to go with MMG. And I definitely uh, went and changed that for the world. It was a great experience the whole time we was over there. It, I mean, you know, that's how I found you and everything, man. You, you know that when you hear that Maybach music club, you know the song about to be hot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? So I was thirsty that once I actually ate the deal, I was thirsty to utilize that as much as I could, bro. <laughs> like, that's so funny, lie. man. That's so funny, man. And in that video, uh, God is great. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people pay attention to the video. Chance the rapper's in the video. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Chance is in that video. Yeah, man. shout out Chance. Me and Chance got the same birthday. Me and Chance and, and Big Mesa, like we've been, you know, making moves with each other for a long time. Chance right. was a part of a lot of my shows coming up. Me and Vic, like I got in tune with Vic when I dropped my first project back in 09. Right. And, like he was like 15 years old. And right. I never really heard nobody that young rap to the quality that he was rapping at. So he helped like make me a better artist in the gotcha. competition. Same with Chance, like, but they're my dogs though. I got a lot of love for them. Do you feel like Kanye had a big influence like on on your career? A thousand percent. I don't think I'd be an artist if it weren't for Kanye. Like, the time that we was coming up in Chicago, mm -hmm. especially me as a shorty, there was just a lot of street music that was getting right. attention. Right. Even though, you know, I got friends that's in that lifestyle, I've been around that lifestyle, I always wanted something different for right. myself. Right. And I think Kanye was one of the first rappers to really show you that you could be out the box and exactly. you know, still have a quality and a appreciation for the finer things, but going about getting it in a different way. And so then with him being from Chicago, that added more right. to the cake for sure. I mean, in my perspective, because I'm not from Chicago, mm -hmm. but I feel like the best way to like be a rapper from Chicago 
and not have to worry too much to be a rapper like you, Chance the Rapper, Vic Mensa, or uh, Kanye West, man. Yeah. Because it, it, like the moment, you know, you put a, uh, because you, man, you, you be stunting on niggas in your music. Like, you, I you, love. <laughs> like, if you ever heard a song, that nigga be like, I, my go yard got one car that'll take your bitch. And when I heard that, I, first of all, when I heard that, I ain't even know what go yard was. Oh, damn. <laughs> and I'm like, he's speaking a different language. Yeah. yeah, nah, that's funny as hell. Now I like to I like to put people on new brands and stuff too. And I mean, like I, I like fashion. You right. know, I tell people like I I'm still heavily in the sports as a fan. Right. I still hooping all of that. But when I was a shorty, that was my goals. I ended up going to this high school called Homewood Flossmoor, very athletic school. Right. And realized that like sports probably wasn't gonna be my thing. Like I was too small. Right. Right. I had right. A, right. The proper training and skill level that I needed to to compete at that level. Right. Right. But I wanted to make a name for myself in a different way, and I started getting into fashion more, collecting sneakers trying to right. put them together in different ways or whatever. And Did you ever run out into Virgil when he was here? Oh man, shout out to Virgil. So fun, fun fact about Virgil, um, him and Don C own this store called RSVP Gallery out here. When yeah, the I know, store yeah. first came, you know, like I was one of the first Chicago rappers that was really shopping there. And like oh, wow. Virgil had a hand at just like orchestrating my second mixtape with me. Oh wow. Which is a project called The Other Side. And it gave me a lot of insight on a creative director. And right. then when he made Pyrex, I was on tour and he was just making sure like every tour stop we was having new pirates, making sure I got her release stuff. So me and Virgil had a pretty good relationship. That's dope as hell. Like, people don't even realize the talent that comes out of Chicago. Yeah. What, what do you, what do you, is it something in the water? Is it something in the city that makes y'all such a, cause I mean, on the music side, the entertainment side, you know what I'm saying? Like y'all got a lot of heavy hitters. Yeah, I think. Um, Reel yours in and throw it again. Oh, somebody messed something messed with mine. We do got some fish in here. Probably a little fish. Throw it back out. But what do you think it is? Uh, what I say is this is like this city kind of puts you in a position of where you have to be authentic. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so uh I think that's a big key right. to the music is like and entertainment in general is like having an element of fun, but also so having right there. Yep. All right, and then throw it back out. What's my technique? This All right, yeah, let the bezel down. Wait, where? Hold on. That that part right there, the silver part. Let open the bezel. All right. Hold, hold up. Okay. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right. Really back up. Uh, Look the bezel over. Yep. All right. Right about there. All right. Cool. A little more. Right so more. put your finger on the line right there. Leave it right there. Other finger on the line. All right. See, I'm left-handed, so this okay. is all uh, right, right there. there. Now flip the bezel open. All right. Perfect. Yeah. And then let it roll. Off. And we oh, what? you good now? All right. See if I catch something in the, in the short wave. <laughs> yeah, so what you were saying, you said Chicago. Nah, yeah, so, so yeah, Chicago just forced you to be, it, it's a good, it's a fun city, but it's a very real place too. And so you got this balance of, you know, being fun and being entertaining, but also we, we mix, we're having to deal with a lot of real stuff that go on around us. And I think that balance, and just even the way that, you know, the media is taken to certain things that have gone on in the city is just like. Yeah, I was going to ask you, is it really like, is it really like that? Like what we hear? It get real in the city, but it's like, it's also a place too where even though every city has a lot of its random, you know, mm -hmm. crime and stuff like that. Chicago, one of them places where you have a high chance of not getting into stuff when you just mind your business. Right. Out the way. We That's what I feel. We yeah. going on more so than it is just right. people randomly just going out here doing stuff. I mean, that's what I feel like it is everywhere, man. Yeah, you know, exactly. you, mind, you like, you know, in L.A., like occasionally when I moved to L.A., then, like I'm from the country. So, you know, I wasn't I was I didn't grow up knowing about like colors. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Exactly. So I didn't know about that shit. Then I go to L.A. And then you know most of, most of the bangers in LA they hear my they hear my accent and then they be like ah oh, nigga you get a pass yeah exactly like you don't even know what the hell going on yeah. <laughs> like so uh, yeah I mean every now and again you run into a knucklehead who just wanted to press the issue but I mean for the most part I was in LA to do what I'm doing now be an entertainer I yeah. wasn't I wasn't out there trying to make fast money or gang bang or exactly. prove I'm the toughest and I stayed out of a lot of shit and I mean I, I go to a lot of cities. Um, you know, dangerous cities that you hear about on the news and, and like even when I go to like the bad areas, people still show love. Like exactly. I mean, the first time I pulled up to Chicago, uh, these Hispanic dudes, they're like, hey, we fuck with you, boy. Anytime you want to come to the hood, let us know, man, you protect it. I'm like, man, see, that's real shit right yeah, there. Like, yeah. they, like, you know, just showing comedians love. And that's why I love being a comedian. I just get to be out the way. I don't got to pick sides and shit. Yeah, exactly. I don't got to be no tough guy persona to be a comedian. Yeah. yeah. 
I, I think too, like, you know, it's crazy you said that because that's just how I'm trying to move as a rapper, which is right. tough because if I'm cool with a lot of people and, you know, people get into it with each other and it's like I always been blessed to be able to have, you know, a neutral perspective and right. everything and to stay out the way. And for that, you know, I done had a pretty blessed career and a pretty peaceful time with me being an artist and I, I'm truly grateful for that. So it's always good to tap in with like-minded people that move that way. You yeah. know what I mean? I've it's been tough out here. I've been on Chicago for a long time, bro. Like, even when I was a kid, man, I'm talking about listening to Do or Die. Yeah, you hell, know what I'm saying? Hell. Twister. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Yes, like, y'all made a name early on. Yeah. And I'm sure there's some dudes out here, like, even for me, man, like, I'm sure you know some dudes who was hella talented who just didn't have a drive that people like, oh, yeah, you know, sure. that. Sure. and you like, hey, man, like, I'm nice, but you should, if my homeboy had it here. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that's always, that's always uh, one of them issues. Yeah, the work ethic is everything, man. That's why I try to tell people, like, you know, you got to be talented. I, I know people say hard work, be talented every time. It's like, you got to have a mix of both, though. You got to be a mix of both. But that hard work is just so important. And they, it, you know how it go, man. They get tough. Like, you, you'll be knocking at that wall for a long time before you really start seeing results. But when you keep going, you eventually start to break through. And so right. it's just about that consistent grind and, like, really stand on your one, two, and just... I tell people all the time, man, I be like, yo, it take 10 years to become an overnight success. Oh, yeah, man. Like, you know what I'm hey, saying? That's the gospel right there, bro. <laughs> I feel the same way, bro. Yeah, I ain't gonna like, lie you know, like you see me, but it's like, dang, but you ain't know when I used to go to open mics, I only had like $5 in yeah. my bank account. Bro, like, you ain't, you ain't know them days. You, but I mean, it is what it is, man. And, and, and those those hard times and those lessons is what make us great artists, you know? Because that. Like, you, like, the thing I like about your music, it was, uh, it's very positive. Like, I think right. it was Driving 88, and you said, uh, Something about impossible. Anything yeah, is impossible. And impossible, impossible is nothing. Yeah. yeah. So like, like you hear stuff like that, and then like, bro, even like so much when I would go to auditions, I play your songs and shit. You know what I mean? You mean a lot to me, bro. Yeah. And congratulations I'm, to you too, not to cut you off, yeah. but I mean, you know, I already been in tune through Mars, but even just continuing to do my research and just, you know, one, seeing how talent, talented you are, what you do, but also the way that you make it in. The way that you're going about it, man, it's a super dope thing. And like I said, I'm, I'm super honored to be able to connect with you. Man, I appreciate you. Like, you know, man. it's always great, man. It's always a treat when players meet, you know what I'm right. saying? Right, <laughs> when players, I mean, Chicago is full of players, man. Y'all still wear the furs out here. Oh, yeah, I gotta get me a fur for this <laughs> one. <laughs> How cold do it get here? What? It get ridiculous out here. Right. See, like, Chicago's a beautiful city, great food. Pretty women, man, but that, the winter time is what I can't take. Nah, bro. I, I, me personally, it's certain people that like it. That's my least favorite thing about the right. when it gets cold outside. And that's also why I built my connection with LA so much and like my yeah. weather, especially when I was, you know, moving around with Ross. It was like being able to go out there in the wintertime and get a new vibe for the music and you know what I'm saying, being some warm weather like how is how is Rick Ross like as a big brother in the industry? How how was that? Was, did you feel like you learned a lot or you... Man, I learned so much, bro. Like I love Ross, man. Like, you know, I view him as family. And he taught me so much, but he also um, gave me so much confidence. Like one thing I can say about him is like, he never, even though I was his little bro and we both knew that, he always made me feel like an equal. Right, like there was right, coming down and right. doing records, the insight that he asked me for on certain things and just, you know, he put me in a position to be a leader. Like, right, and right. always treated me as such. Same with the other guys too though. Like I went on tour with Meek, I went on tour with Wale, opened up for both of their tours for Dream Chasers. Right. Like, that's why when I hit the intro, when, when me performing the intro, anytime I hear it, it means so much more to right. me because I was on a tour for that before that right. album even came out. And so just to be a part of that whole experience, them guys never uh, tried to belittle me, even though I was the youngest member, even though at a certain time frame I had the least amount of fans, all of that, they always treated me like a, a, a an A-list artist, you know? So it was, it was always like family oriented. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. yeah, hell yeah, man. Because look, Meek, me, it was, so at the time it was uh, you, Meek, and Wale, right? Yeah, yeah Marion and Stanley. Oh yeah, Marion. Yeah, cause they had that song. Uh, yeah, I remember him and Ross dropped the song. And you said who? And Stanley. Who Stanley? Stanley. He um from Ohio. He was signed like right before me to um to MMG. He he got a few records. He got that song Ten Jesus Pieces with Ross and um and Nipsey. Yeah, Stanley, yeah. my dog, though. Midwest guy. Oh nice. Yeah, I'm in Ohio next week. Man. Oh yeah. <laughs> all over, man. Traveling all over. How that tour life been treating you? It's amazing, man. I got um. You got kids? 
Two kids. I got two daughters. Two daughters, too. Two daughters too. I got an eight-year-old and a three-year-old, man. Yeah. And I love touring, but it's like, you know, like, my daughters be like, when are you talking about? Damn. Yeah. That ain't got to get this money, man. You like... Nah, facts. Like, so I actually haven't been on tour since I had my kids because we were supposed to go on tour, COVID hit. Then I started really learning how to make money without having to hit the road. So it allowed me to really like be there, you know, for my shorties. Right, but right, at right. the same time, it's like, I miss being on the road so right, heavy. So right. with this next album, I plan on trying to tour for like two years straight. I want to hit it hard because I, I miss it for sure. You been overseas? Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Ain't nothing like that tour life. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it get tiresome. You flying here, you flying there. You might be on a, a tour bus or whatnot, but uh, ain't nothing like that tour life, man. And, and then like, like, I don't even think like people who are fans, I don't even think they realize like how much they mean. Like when I get on stage, oh. bro, nothing else matters. Damn, I'm stuck. You got it? Nah, hold on. There we go. Let me see if I learned. Yeah, you said when you're on stage, nothing else matters though. Nothing else matters, man. I don't care what just happened prior to me coming on stage. Once I'm on that stage, I can't be bothered. Yeah, man, it's a beautiful feeling, man. It's a, it's a true privilege, too, especially with the numbers that you're doing on the road, like to have people really come in, you know, support and really want to see what you bring to the table. It's like it comes with a lot of responsibility. A lot of responsibility. Uh, good, good pressure, not bad pressure. So like this, so reel it up. It's about right there. Grab this part with your finger, release the bezel, mm -hmm. and throw. So grab first, then yep. release bezel right now. Release the bezel. Yep, and then chunk it. Why, uh, oh, oh. Shit. oh <laughs> <laughs> All good. <laughs> I gotta come from this way. Yeah, reel it in. All right, there we go. Damn, this is it. This is real life. Let me see. Up. I get it out for you. Damn. We gotta we gotta have a tutorial day official for Rocky Flex. Facts. They they put me too close to the trees. I throw it out there for you, bro. All right, man. Appreciate you. Yeah. Teamwork make the dream work. Makes the dream work. Always. And see, now it's funny you asked me about going overseas, because my first overseas tour was actually with Mac Miller. Really? Yeah, rest in peace to Mac. I always gotta take the opportunity to thank him any sense I get for Allow me to experience overseas for the first time. All the shows were sold out. It was an amazing Damn. time for me, man. Like for real. That's crazy. I hate, I hate that background too. Like he was a legend for sure. You ever run into uh, Post Malone? Yeah, Post Malone. Yeah, bro. Post Malone. When he first came out too, he showed me a lot of love early. And I say one thing about Post Malone is like even to this day, I try to make it a point to attend his concerts in Chicago. He won the best performance I ever seen. Swear. Yeah, I me, love Post Malone shows. Me and him just became friends, man, and I went to his uh, show in Houston. I, yeah, I saw you roast him, too. You wild. Yeah. <laughs> you wild as And I told him, I said, bro, like, I've been to a lot of great concerts. Ye, Kanye and Jay-Z, fucking Roger Water, you know, shit like that. And I said, bro, you like you up, a legend, bro. You up there like top five. Yeah, he liked that. Yeah. yeah. And the music is great. Like I actually listen to his albums. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's like to hear it, right. you know, that way and then go see it live. And it's just like he even elevated it's even more. Crazy, his vocals are so on point. Like, yeah. I got a lot of respect for Post as an artist for sure. Yeah, he, he moved to Salt Lake City, man. He got tired of that LA life. I, mean, yeah. I feel him, bro. Like, especially if you like you from a real city, like he from Texas, yeah. like he from Chicago. And like me, man, like I can take LA now that I've moved, cause I lived there my whole life up until last year. And now that I moved, I'm like, damn, it don't got the same appeal it used to have. Yeah, yeah, it's changed a lot. I mean, but you know how it go. Like once everybody started catching on, trying to do the same thing, it kind of, you know, it's been hot out here. Yeah, yeah. It ain't even that hot, it's just the sun. And I got this jacket on. That's supposed to be like 90-something today, though. Oh, that ain't too bad, man. I'm in Texas. Oh, man. yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we be get real out there. We be 110. Y'all in Vegas, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Yeah, man. man. It be 110 in, in, in Texas like it ain't shit, man. I ain't really tripping on that. You know, I love Austin. I, I can't remember the uh, specific restaurants, but the food out there. The I'm barbecue big, and shit? Yeah, I'm real big on food, so I love the food out there. 
Hey, yo, what's up, man? Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. Uh, you can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. A lot of people ask, does it work? Hell yeah, it works, man. You need to try it. Try it for a month and see. You're going to love it. You could be missing out on the best sex of your life. With Blue Chew, men everywhere are excited to see the postman because when your package has arrived, your package has arrived. They always say first impressions are important. What about lasting impressions? They say there's nothing sexier than confidence and Blue Chew can help give you the confidence where it counts. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code David at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code David to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. When you coming back to do South by Southwest? Man, I might come to the next one. I ain't been in about three years, but before then I went every year like probably like six years straight so south by south work is crazy man. yeah it's a vibe but it was a, always a great time man we had a lot of great artists out there did a lot of shows now i got a question for you man i watched a lot of little boosie and little boosie said every artist should move out of their hometown because your hometown will kill you you didn't mm -hmm. feel like that um i mean i move around a lot but at the same time and I and I'm a big supporter of Boosie too. I think that that has to be uh, with your type of music. Exactly, it's an asterisk that go behind that. Right. That especially goes for street artists. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's because you know when you're doing a lot out here, man. As much as you're gonna have fans, you always gonna have people that never forget. So Stuff work you that did. you did in the streets, and then now you outside, you moving around a certain type of way, so you become more accessible. Wow. Regardless of you having security or not, you know, even with a lot of the, the, the street artists that I know, it's a feeling for them to still be in their hood and to still move around a certain type of way. And so when you do that, it's like you allow yourself to be a little bit more open to what's right. going on. Right. And I move around to Chicago a lot, too. But at the same time, it's like I don't feel obligated because I'm not a street dude to right. Right. immerse myself in that type of community to prove what right. I got going on. Exactly. So it's like when I'm in L.A., bro. I hang out in Compton, I hang out in yeah. Watts, South Central, Long Beach, because I'm not a, like, I'm not no banger. Exactly. I'm not a street dude. Yeah, you know exactly. I do, I do the same. Shout out my bro, Casey Veggies. Like, oh, shout yeah. out Nip, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, these guys have already, like, moved around with a lot out there. But when I was in them areas, even, you know, when I'm moving around neighborhoods, like, people showing me love and, like, to the point where I was moving around L.A. so much, people thought I was an L.A. artist. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's so, funny, man. But at the same time, it's like, I never went out there and, like, we're but, trying to push no issue or uh, right, went right. to Chicago on the street type of way. I just, you know, be myself. And do you know Sean Morgan? Sean Morgan, Chicago dude. Sound familiar. familiar. Yeah, he's funny as hell. That's my boy, Sean Morgan. I got to tap in. He sound familiar yeah. as hell though. Probably, bro, uh, you know, he had a few issues or whatnot, but he's probably like minute for minute, one of the funniest people I've ever seen. I got to tap in. Yeah, yeah. But uh, he, he, he back on the straight track now and doing comedy but I, you know for years he had a little problem or whatnot but he getting back but he yeah, it's all about the bounce back man bounce back Life, you gonna go through some shit you always gotta be able to take it and keep it moving you know with the cancer culture all the shit going on out here man you gotta keep hustling cancel culture ain't even real no more that's what i'm saying should be capped you cancel somebody like me or you're only gonna help us right <laughs> Like, what you gonna cancel me for? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, already people know I talk crazy. Exactly. You just caught on. Right. Now you've exposed me to more people. Exactly. Because you wanted to be stupid. Exactly. Yeah. So you yeah. me down, you building me up at the end of the day. Yeah. You ever had any type of cancel culture or anything like that? Any? Nah, not really. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's only been a problem like the last four, five years. Yeah. And I and I would be real like, I'm one of them type of people where I'm a, I'm very opinionated around the people I'm supposed to be right, around, right, right. around. Right. And I utilize my music to get off my opinions to the masses, but that's on them to choose to listen to it. With social media and shit like that, I really don't like to speak too much on right. what's going on. And it ain't even because I'm afraid of what somebody gonna think about my opinion. It's just like, I don't like to use my platform to speak negatively about right, right. other people. Exactly. Now, I used to do it when I was younger, you know what I'm saying? And like, just not knowing the power of my voice and like, 
how I affect certain people and how I can make people right. look at certain things. But like, I'm really not like a a, a, a random, I got to get this thought out type of person. So right. with that, I feel like that keep a lot of- Nah, for real. Long time, right. keep a lot of shit off my table. I remember earlier, I don't know who said it on video, but maybe it was before, uh, you said you sent 20 songs to Ross. Yeah. Hell and he yeah. picked Guy that's great to shoot the video. Yeah, the flew the, the, flew the yeah. video out. My boy Dre films out the next day. That's we crazy. Put the video together, right then and there. Like when you when you sending those twenty songs, were you happy when he chose Guy that's great, or did you have another one that you thought like, man, this is the one I really? Because I have that a lot. Like when my, yeah. when I shoot videos, man, I have a video I'm so passionate about, and it won't do the numbers that I wanted to do. And I'm yeah, like, what the, like that's one of my favorites. Yeah, I feel I be feeling that way about a lot of shit for sure. That that way where it's like, man, this is a song that I just know people snoop on. But at the same time, I go back to what you were saying earlier, like the marketing and the algorithms and everything. It's just like you never know if a person even really had the opportunity right. to get to see exactly what right. you did. As far as what God is great, that was one of those records. Like, so Boy Wonder produced that. Boy Wonder is one of my favorite producers of all time. Okay. So it's like, I know the quality of music that he makes. It's like, if I send 20 records and three of them Boy Wonder, they, they, they gonna get some type of extra attention. So I knew that song quality was at a different level. Gotcha. But I was shocked at how much Ross really loved the record to the point where he was like, man, this is gonna be the first single for Self Made Through. That, that like, that, uh, that validated a lot for me as a creative. When you, when you, when you create music, is it did you go into making God is great knowing that it would be timely? No. So so I put out a mixtape right before we started working on Self Made 3 called Electric Highway. Okay. And I initially I made God is great for that project and I didn't even put it on the album because I just didn't feel like, you know what I'm saying, it was at that level. Right. And then um with Ross, when he asked me to send him some records for Self Made 3, like I sent him 20 because I wanted him to know that I was working. Like right. I didn't necessarily think even though i knew god is great was a quality song i just wanted him to know like man, i got a lot of right like i do this i do this i do know i'm not like when you when we book in the studio time i'm not in here playing like right I'm making right songs. right but um but i i've grown to like not overthink the creative process i don't write any of my music either from from day one every song i ever put out is freestyle damn so it's like i go into it I, i'm real big on beat selection though right so once i hit the right beat and it just that's right. As lyrics, I just go in and, and go. That's that Lil Wayne stuff, man. Yeah, man. I came up, I came up under that that thinking too. But I also used to work at a a, a tea shop called Argo Tea, and I started working in the back where you actually pack the glass right. of tea. Right. And so, like, we had to basically pack a certain amount like right. within our, our work day. And so, uh, I used to I used to be able to listen to my music because I was working in a in a room by right. myself. So I'd be playing beats. And then coming up with my songs while I'm packing the tea, and then I have to remember, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause I couldn't write the stuff down. So from there, it just kind of trained me into being able to right. I see. Go off the top like that. So you do like the verse, or the, do you get the hook first or the verse? Now it's just like whatever comes first. Like sometimes I might even go in, be mumbling like just the flow pattern. Right. You know oh, what I'm saying yeah. And that's then how you do that. Exactly. Yeah. Then a couple words might come out, and then I'm like, all right, cool. Then right. I go back, piece it together. Sometimes the hook comes. Sometimes the verse come, it's just like, I'm real open to That's dope as hell. Yeah, man. just whatever, you know, wherever it go. Yeah, I like that, bro. Sometimes you make some weak shit too, but <laughs> we all do. Part of the game. We all do, man. We all do, man. You know, sometimes we love something and it just don't hit to the exactly. other people the way that we thought it would hit. Exactly. Part of the game. Yeah, what I got going on now? This your line? Yeah, I get it. Yep, you good. Oh, almost, almost. Hold on. I was hoping we was gonna catch a fish out here. Might be the third time trying right here. Right. Oh, there we go. Hey, there we go. There we, go. we got it. You got it on camera? So. Hell yeah. You got to let it sit like right there. Yeah. Throw mine out. Hold on. You got it over the tree? That's yeah. That's so funny. 
Yeah. Oh, your line went up in the tree. It's in a tree? Yeah. How? Who knows, bro? That's how fish Come will on, be. Come on, now. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, I thought I had it. You, you did a good job. But I mean, if if this was if if this was fishing the video game with these trees right here, this is like a level five or six. Not for real. Yeah, trees is a bitch, boy. I mean, I'm look learning. at look at that cork yeah. right there. I'm learning at a high level right now. That's <laughs> <laughs> about. So I learned at a high level. That's so fucking funny, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah, so they, oh, that's a genius. Uh, that's a genius idea though for a podcast, bro. We snap. Thank you, man. Thank you, bro. Like, yeah, a lot of people ask me that. Like, how did you come up with that? I said, bro, I enjoy fishing. And when you fish, a lot of it ain't even about catching. It's about the conversation. Yeah. Talking to people. You find out a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? You relax when you're fishing. There ain't no pressure. Like, even if you don't catch it, you relax. This yeah. is like mine. This is like mine. This is like my yoga or my meditation. Right yeah, here. Yes. This is what I do to just clear my mind. Like I, I, I got eight shows this week. I got two more uh, tonight, and uh, I'm going to Georgia next week, for, and uh, just be on the lake for like three days. Yeah, yeah. You like you like the boat life too. Yeah, yeah. I love the boat life. We yeah, I'm uh, big on the boat life. Whenever you get to uh, Austin, we got a boat now, so we're gonna get you on the boat. Oh, you got to fish with that. Hell yeah. yeah, yeah. You might have just put me on, or I might have to start sliding down here. Yeah, man. Oh, this spot. Yeah. Yeah. Bring your kids. Like it's exactly. chill, bro. Super chill. Hella chill. Oh, some of my own. We got some good minnows, boy. These are good minnows. I hope we get a fish. So, as far as your legacy and your music, man, like, what is it that? How do you want people to remember you in, in a thousand years? Well, I just want I want people to one, you know, be inspired to do something better with themselves when right. they my music. Know that they could push for it. Like with me, you know, even when it comes down to the relationship that I have, like. When it come down to the Rick Ross, Chris right. Brown, Ed Sheeran, like I didn't know these guys when I was growing up. So, right. are you cool with Ed Sheeran? Yeah, that's my boy. That's my boy. He just did seventy thousand. Yeah, I was here for that. I took my family to that show. Like, but Ed, my boy, though. Every like that's that's another person where his growth. Um, I got to see that from the jump. We linked in like twenty thirteen, so I just seen the elevation and. You know, he always uh, kept his loyalty towards me and vice versa. So right. anytime you come to Chicago or anytime I'm in the same state that. He got a show. We always link up. We didn't. Cause he didn't want to see you, right? Yeah, he from London. So, but but even with them, it's like you know, earning their respect came from just being myself through the right. music. And so I want to just motivate people to be that, be they self, and like work hard at what you do. And you can achieve, you know, some of your wildest dreams. It don't gotta be entertaining. It could be whatever work feels you and whatever you got going on. I want my music to be the soundtrack for right, people that right. kind of persevere and go forward with their lives. And then too, man, just you know that I did it in a fresh way, my mm -hmm. own way. Tried yeah. to bring something new to the table and like, you know. That should be a t-shirt, just fresh. Yeah, fact. Yeah, Rocky fresh shirt, bro. That's we gonna do that. Nope, sure it. It. Yeah, I, I need one, bro. I need one. We, we got to have that. Let's do that. So as far as where your career is right now, do you do you feel there's anything you could have changed early on that could have maybe sent you in a different direction? Or do you enjoy everything that has transpired this far? Um, I think it's a little mixture of both. Like I enjoy everything, but what I will say is like, in the time that I was coming up, mm -hmm. I really didn't, um, uh, as I wouldn't say like I was cocky or nothing like that. I was just so focused on like work and like trying to do the right thing that I didn't appreciate and have as much fun in my early years. And I feel like now, you know, I'm in my thirties, I'm 32. I'm having more fun than I really ever had, even though like the situation is a lot different. I'm just learning to appreciate day by day and not being so hard on the process. Always, like I said, working hard, continuing to create as much as possible, but at the same time, not putting so much pressure on the results and just really just allowing for, you know, the music to speak for itself and really right. grow. And when stuff don't go my way, it's just back to the drawing board. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. I think if, if I would change anything, I would have just appreciated it a little bit more in the sense of just the ability to be an artist with a platform and having fun with it. But I also think I fixed that now. And so people gonna see you know, an even better side of me moving forward. Like when you got on and you started, you know, making money and signed the Maybach, did your family change or everything stay pretty much the same? Man, I got to give my family that credit. They they all pretty much stayed the same in it. I wouldn't say it shocked me, but I wasn't one of them kids that wanted to be no rapper. You know what I'm saying? So me becoming an artist, especially the type of music I make, I know it caught them off guard. But I think that's what made my path a lot easier too, is like my family, 
They never put too much pressure on me. They never uh, really switched up in no type of way. I have friends that switched up. Right. But as far as my mom, my dad, my brother, and my sister, like they stayed right. solid throughout the whole way. And uh, I'm super grateful for them for, for allowing me to like enjoy this, you know, for and, and right. take it on the way that I needed to take it on without having them all on my back and stuff. And I mean, I, I was always there to help, of course, you know, with certain things they needed, but it was certain stuff that I needed at certain times too, where they looked out for me. So it's been really balancing. I'm grateful to have a family set up like that, that, that kept it solid the whole way. I got friends that need rent money every month. Oh uh, man, I can imagine. <laughs> I'm like, I bro, imagine. I got two kids you want to take out of their mouth? You know what I'm saying? Hey, all right, look, if you can't about you having kids, none of that. Let me give you my daughter, let me give you my daughter number and ask her. Right? <laughs> she can pay me no. So but I learned that too. I'm one of them niggas like, bro, I tell people no. They, a lot of times people know not to ask me. Cause I don't, <laughs> I like, nah, bro. You better go out here and get it. I ain't got time. Outside of music, because I remember um, it was it was in God and it was in God is great. You said you were working on a movie script. Yeah, is that something that you still do? Uh, I definitely want to revisit that. Now that I got, um, was it just a float, or was that really like a passion of yours? No, nah, so it was a passion. Uh, shout out to my homie Kenny. Like one, that's one of my uh, my old homies. Like me and him don't really talk as much now, but um, he was him and his brother Kells, which is one of my best friends. They were heavy in the film. And so that was something that we used to talk about all the time when we was on the road. And I really wanted to empower them, you know, through the connection that right. I have to be able to actually put some of these ideas into life. And right. my boy Kells, I'm proud of him. He's actually living in LA working for a film house now. So, you know, as he continues to flourish in that in that world, I definitely want to connect back with him and put some things together. And then even with now, like I got so many acting connects. Like shout out my little cousin Judea. She plays on the show. The shy, she's one of the, uh, she's an actual gym on the shy, and like she's making a lot of moves right now. So it's a lot of actors that, around Chicago and other states that I know too. You know that, Jason Weaver? Jason Weaver, I, yeah, I didn't run into him a bunch of That's times. my boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lion yeah. King, that's Lion King from yeah. Chicago, from the shy. Yes, yeah, sir. Here, so, so y'all got, y'all got it. that that. So uh, the shy, you just said the shy. Is that a accurate depiction of Chicago? The TV show? Um, I think it's a, I think it's a decent depiction. Yeah. I mean, shout out Lena Waif. That's one of my close friends too. Uh, she always give me a lot of solid advice on just my music, right. just how to move out here. I think she did a real good job with the show. Of course, it's a lot of things that, right. you know, what I'm saying, I love fabricated. But overall, I think it's a pretty good depiction on, you know, some of the stuff that's going on here, and in a, it's in an artistic way. Right. I think it opened up, you know. But also, I feel like it's a lot of other sides of the city that still haven't had that spotlight as far as in a. Um, in a film way, right? You know, it would be dope to be a part. Not saying that I'm a spearhead or direct the movie right. or whatever the case may be, but I love to be a part of you right. know, something that's a little bit more raw than the city. Like I just see you, bro. Like I don't know if it's the Chicago in you, but like when I, like when I used to watch you, you know what I'm saying? Like I mean, I still watch a guy's great video, but like even seeing you in person, bro, like. You just seem like so much more than than a rapper. Man, thank you. What, what are your other ventures outside of rap? I, you got to have some type of clothing store. Just, Man, you know? honestly, like, I'm so, so I tell people this all the time. When it came down to rap, one reason why I did it is because it was so easy to me. Like I told you, I don't write the lyrics, so it come natural. Right. So with that being said, it's like I'm a big supporter. So I got a lot of homies that own clothing stores that I'm just focused on supporting they stuff versus me even having my own and competing with what they got going on. It's just like, I like to support other people and the stuff right. that they're good at. With the same time, you know, my dad, he um, worked for the Chicago Board of Trade. So he was heavy in the stock market. I got a friend named Brian Spaeth who also used to work at the Board of Trade too. Right. And so he put me in the stocks. And really that's, you know, one of the only things that I'm really like dabbling into. But at the same time, now that I'm getting into my thirties, it's like my mind is opening up a lot more like, yeah. I mastered, I wouldn't say I mastered the rap game, but I mastered the ability of being able to make music and it feel effortless. And now I want to just try my hands at, at a few Who, other things. Who's your dream collab? One dream artist, collab. dead or alive. Ooh, that's crazy. Dream collab. Like, that's tough. Cause there's a lot of artists that I, I want to work with. Um, believe it or not, I'm a huge Young Thugs fan. He one of the few artists that I haven't had the opportunity to work with, Drake. I love to do yeah. something with Drake. I mean, a lot of the guys that I dreamed of working with, I've been blessed to work with them already. So I feel like, yeah, Jay-Z, Andre 3000, Drake, and Wayne are probably like in my top four yeah. who I want to work with. Young Thug is dope, bro. He, he, free uh, Thug, man. Free Thug. Free the Thug. That, me and my little brother was just talking about that on the way here, man, because, uh, you know, I was raised in Georgia, man, and that new, whatever she is in Georgia, 
That look, she ain't playing no man. Game. She filed she charges. She got Trump locked up. <laughs> <laughs> right, she said. Right, she filed charges on Trump. I'm like, shorty, she put that. you got to be careful, right? You got to be careful. careful. You. you already like. Eh. Yeah, man. But uh, what what you got coming out in the future? So right now I got a new single that I just dropped not too long ago. It's called Cost to Win. Make sure you go check that out. I got a new single coming out soon. The title of this called Everything is Broken. I'm going to drop that with a video. And then I got one more single that I'm going to be dropping after that. And then I'm going to probably announce the date for my next project. Okay. So uh, when can we see you on the road? Man, hopefully I'll be on the road sometime towards the end of this year going into January. Dick Gregory said we don't believe in hope. Oh, yeah, come on now. Yeah, come on, man. Let's go. Yeah, hope your car crank up. Nah, thanks. <laughs> ain't, no, ain't no hope. We will be. There we go. Let's there go. we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll see him in January, Rocky Fresh on the road. Where can they catch you on the social? Man, follow me on Instagram, at Rocky Fresh, R-O-C-K-I-E-F-R-E-S-H. That's my tag on all social media. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's called X9, Twitter no more, whatever. Right. So yeah, follow me on all that. Yeah. Appreciate you, bro. Hey, appreciate Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Peace. Thank you, bro. Peace.